very good morning to all of you. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, ISA Kerala and ISA Trivandrum for giving me an opportunity to speak at this state conference. I'll be speaking on to you what is new in resuscitation guidelines. Before that, I would uh, like all of you to know about ILCOR. ILCOR is International License Committee on Resuscitation. This was formed in 1992 to provide a forum for license between various resuscitation councils worldwide. It comprises of seven resuscitation councils. And these are the resuscitation council and you are all familiar with AHA that is American Heart Association. You would also know about Indian Resuscitation Council, which is new, which was formed in 2017 under the ages of Indian Society of Anesthesiologists. And I'm very happy to inform you that uh, Indian Resuscitation Council is a observer invitee to ILCOR. Uh, this uh, are the members of the ILCOS and ILCOR and uh, uh, this was taken on the occasion of World Restart Heart Day. And you can see the chairman of Indian Resuscitation Council, Dr. Chakar Rao, sir, and also Dr. Rakesh, sir. Uh, he is the scientific committee uh, director in this picture. So uh, whatever updates each resuscitation council bring about are from the signs of the ILCOR. So I'll be speaking on the AHA guidelines uh, of, uh, for, uh, of 2020 for CPR. The earlier guideline was in 2015. The one earlier to that was in 2010. And uh, uh, th there was an interim report uh, at, uh, to, uh, in 2018. So these are, uh, my reference are from this, and you can visit eccguidelines.org for your official guideline sources. Now, this is what you're seeing here is chain of survival. This is for both uh, out of hospital uh, cardiac arrest and in, in hospital cardiac arrest. This is of uh, 2015. There are, uh, if you see, there are five links. Now in 2020, there is one more link added uh, that is uh, uh, recovery. This is because support is needed during recovery for uh, cardiac arrest survivors to uh, ensure optimal physical, cognitive, and emotional well-being and return to uh, return to their normal. So the IHA recommends multimodal rehabilitation assessment and treatment before discharge from the hospital. One of the key changes is uh, about the modification of cardiac arrest algorithm. There is emphasis on early epinephrine administration in patients uh, with non-shockable rhythms. So the, from the RCT on 8,500 patients, what they've seen that epinephrine increases the return of spontaneous circulation and survival of the patient. So uh, 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 another change is about, uh, about the antiarrhythmics used in uh, refractory shock that is in cardiac arrest. So earlier uh, it was amiodarone and if not available, it was uh, lignocaine being mentioned. Now they say that amiodarone and lignocaine are now considered equivalent. So that is the change what you see. Uh, uh, you have to give epinephrine as soon as possible and also about amiodarone uh, and, uh, or lignocaine in uh, refractory shock. Another change is on the chest compression fraction. So uh, chest compression fraction is the ratio of duration of chest compression with the total duration of cardiac arrest. Uh, the, the more the chest compression fraction, the more will be the coronary perfusion pressure. So you should always try to keep it high. So earlier recommendation was to keep it at least 60%. Now 2020 recommendation is you have to aim uh, and keep it more than 80%. 
There are two new opioid associated emergency algorithms have been added for lay, lay person uh, and uh, trained rescuers. Uh, but this is not common in India, but in US it is very common. Another key change is on the post cardiac arrest algorithm is updated. There is a multimodal approach to neuroprognostication. And uh, you see, uh, post cardiac arrest care is given to patients who return from spontaneous circulation. So the changes, this is the new algorithm. The changes are uh, regarding uh, the oxygenation. Uh, earlier it was said that you have to keep uh, oxygen, if it is less than 94, there was not a uh, upper target on that. Now there is a wide range has been kept, uh, 92 to 98 percent, so that uh, so that there, uh, this is to avoid uh, hyperoxia and hypoxia. So you have to titrate the oxygen and give. Another change is on uh, treatment of hypotension. Uh, like uh, earlier it was told that systolic blood pressure, if it is less than 90, you will have to treat hypertension. Now they have added the main arterial pressure also. That is, if it is less than 65, to treat hypertension. For detection of uh, detection and treatment of seizures, they say that EEG monitoring should be included. There is a new diagram with multimodal approach to guide uh, the prognostication that is added, uh, and this is the diagram. Well, uh, the, here, the x-axis represent uh, the time, the, the time after return of the spontaneous circulation, and the y-axis uh, represent various modalities. Against this, there are interventions which has to be uh, which has to be done within the time on the x-axis. So, to the example, you can see targeted temperature management. Uh, from zero, zero as soon as possible, you should uh, start, and that is to 30 hours. Then later, rewarming the patient to 50 hours. Then later, you have to limit your sedation and analgesia as possible, and for the controlled uh, normothermia. So, imagine imaging, you can see the at CT and MRI later, then serum markers, serum NSC. So, uh, all these are marked in such a way that. Uh, the rescuer uh, uh, can see this and do accordingly, uh, accordingly for a better prognosis. So another uh, uh, like important thing is like all this diagnostic uh, test for multimodal prognostication should be done at least 72 hours after normal therapy. So that that part is very important. This should be done only after that. So one of the major changes is uh, about the cardiac arrest in pregnancy algorithm. You all know that there are two lives involved, a mother and a child. Uh, if the blood is not restored to the mother, the, both the mother and the baby will die. So this is the algorithm, uh, what we have. And uh, you see, you all know that they are more prone to hypoxia because of increased metabolism, uh, decrease of RC due to gra uh, gravid uterus, and there is a risk of fetal brain injury from hy uh, hypoxia also. So the, what they are saying is to you have to prioritize oxygenation and uh, airway management. So in airway management, what they are saying that you should intubate the patient uh, early. Uh, uh, unlike other situations. And uh, interference, because of the interference with the maternal resuscitation, the fetal monitoring should not be undertaken. For those who remain comatose after a return of spontaneous circulation, you should do targeted temperature management. And during targeted temperature management, the fetus to be continuously monitored for bradycardia, which is a possible complication. Perimortem cesarean delivery, they, they say that it should be done uh, within five minutes. This is to improve the maternal resuscitation by evacuation of the uterus and also to save the fetus.
regarding the early initiation of CPR by layperson. So see, layperson, what uh, what was the problem? Uh, what we face is that uh, like they, they are reluctant to start the CPR because they are doubtful and uh, to determine uh, whether uh, there is a pulse or uh, not. So what they, what they have seen that there is uh, the risk of harm. Uh, to the patient is low if, if the patient is not in cardiac arrest. So they recommend that lay person initiate CPR to presume uh, cardiac arrest because the risk of harm to the patient is low if the patient is not in cardiac arrest. Regarding various uh, routes of administration of emergency drugs, you have intravenous, uh, you have uh, introsious and endotracheal. Earlier it was told that intravenous and introsious are equivalent, but now to the 2020 ILCOR systematic review compared these things and they said the IV route was associated with a better clinical outcome and if IV access is difficult, then you go for introsious uh, access. Feedback devices used for optimization of chest compression. A recent RCT reported that a 25% increase in survival to hospital discharge when these were used. So this is a feedback device. Uh, this is CPR meter. You can see a display on that that is placed over the chest of the patient and you are uh, compressing uh, by keeping a heel over it. So these are the displays. So from this display, you can know that uh, the depth is not adequate here. The recoil is incomplete. Here, it is written too fast. That, that, that shows that you are speed of compression is very fast and hands of time, that's the interruption time. Ideally, it should be less than 10 seconds. And now it is mentioned uh, uh, 23 seconds. And here it's an overall uh, average of all this. So if you are using these, uh, these uh, uh, feedback devices, you will, can give a very good uh, high quality CPR. So it is recommended, it may be reasonable to use these uh, for real-time optimization of CPR performance. Then regarding bradycardia, uh, like in symptomatic bradycardia, uh, the dose of atropine is changed. That is to uh, one milligram. Earlier, you all know that it was 0.5 milligram. And dopamine infusion, the rate is changed to 5 to 20 microgram per kg uh, per minute. So these are the changes about the atropine and also uh, about... Uh, <laughs> about dopamine. You all know that physiological monitoring for CPR quality, if you are measuring uh, intraarterial pressure or ETCO2, you can optimize the CPR quality. You can detect the return of spontaneous circulation because there will be an abrupt increase in these parameters and you can guide the vasopressor therapy. So they say that it's reasonable to use these when feasible to monitor and optimize C uh, CPR quality. Double sequential defibrillation. This is no more uh, recommended. It is nothing but give, applying, uh, giving two uh, simultaneous shock using two defibrillators. They say that uh, there is no evidence to support this and, uh, and recommended against its routine use because uh, of risk of harm from increased energy. In pediatric uh, basic uh, and advanced life support, uh, like in adults, there is a sixth link that is the recovery. There are two new opioid associated emergency alg algorithm. There is a single uh, pediatric tachycardia with, uh, with pulse algorithm with, uh, is added actually uh, for both uh, narrow and wide complex tachycardia and the pediatric cardiac arrest algorithm and bradycardia uh, algorithm is uh, updated. And one, one thing what they say that for infant resuscitation, two thumb encircling hands compression is better than two finger compression because it gives a better perfusion. A new checklist has been added for pediatric post cardiac arrest care. And that is the checklist which include various parameters. Regarding the ventilation rate for infants and children with pulse and no breath, the earlier recommendation, one breath in, uh, in three to five seconds, then the uh, systematic review shows that higher ventilator rates improved rates of uh, return of spontaneous circulation survival. So the recommendation is one breath every two to three seconds, that is 20 to 30 breaths per minute. With CPR with advanced airway, the previous recommendation, like ad adults, it was one breath every six seconds. 
uh, that comes to 10 per minute. Now the recommendation for in the increased ventilation rate, that is one breath every two to three seconds. And uh, cough endotracheal uh, tubes are recommended, but you have to be cautious on the cough pressure. Uh, use of cricot pressure is no more uh, recommended. Uh, then like in adults, epinephrine should be given as soon as possible in non-shockable rhythm. Uh, and you can use continuous measurement of uh, interarterial pressure for improve the CPR quality. And after all, patients should be evaluated for seizures, status epilepticus, and treated. Neonatal uh, support, vascular assist, the umbilical vein is the recommended route. Regarding termination of preg pregnancy, when there is no likelihood of survival, they say that reasonable time frame is fixed around 20 minutes after the birth. In resuscitation educational science, you have booster training and space learning approach. Booster training sessions are brief, frequent sessions focused on repetition of the prior contents. And space learning approach is the training is separated into multiple sessions. So these improves the retention of CPR skills and there is a greater effectiveness. So these are implemented uh, for resuscitation training. In situ uh, education, uh, that is a simulation, refers to the training conducted in actual uh, patient care areas. Here you can see that uh, real patient experiences are replaced with scenarios uh, using life uh, like mannequins, computers, standardized patient, etc. So the advantage is a realistic training. It creates a realistic training environment. It's a positive impact on learning outcomes. They equip to perform critical tasks and uh, uh, team performance and patient outcome will be better. So it is recommended to continue conduct uh, in-situ simulation based training either alone or in addition to the traditional training. Thank you very much. And you can visit eccguidelines.org uh, uh, today for your official uh, resources. Thank you very much for the patient listening.